a big hello to you it's so great to see you and i hope to find you well we're back out in the garden doing the next episode of this epic o gauge garden railway rebuild you might recognize the shed behind me it's changed color but that's where trinity road used to live it doesn't live there anymore the fun stuff is over here come on i'll show you today's video comes in association with trainomatic makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from... This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at clarkrailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. In today's video, we're going to be starting the fun job of laying track. We've been building up to this and I've got a really great idea for how we're going to secure the track down. Now, ultimately, it's going to be ballasted. And of course, in the great outdoors, we're not going to be using PVA. We're going to be using the gravel, but we're going to be using cement powder with that. But we're getting really ahead of ourselves in this episode. I'm going to start laying the track out. I've got it all salvaged from the previous garden layout out here and I've cleaned it up a little bit and one of the things that I've looked to do is to solder together some of the short curves, the set track curves that I used before because I want to minimize the number of joints. You can't minimize them all together because we're going to have expansion and contraction and it, it can get quite bad outdoors where you've got direct sunlight you've also got frosts and stuff in winter so i will need some expansion gaps but i can turn the rails into maybe three foot lengths and just reduce the number that i need to solder bridging wires across i've soldered together pairs of the curves and you can see just there that uh, using the DCC Concepts No Clean Flux, it's actually possible to solder quite readily to tarnished rail. I uh, just made sure that we've got lots of the flux down into the fish plate. By soldering them together on a flat surface does mean that uh, uh, these uh, will have less inclination to kink. And I need four of these double curves to do uh, 180 degrees. So that's enough just to do the track laying in this area here. And I'm going to clean up some straights as well, which uh, are actually flexi track, and I'm going to lay them across here. But before we do all that, I've got to stick the track down. And I'm going to be using an interesting technique. I need to make sure that it's fairly level and don't want twists either. That was something that caused a bit of a nuisance in the last incarnation of the Garden Railway. I got to thinking that I can set quite a fine level if I have a series of screws where I drill some holes, put some roll plugs in, and then the screw screws into that. You can see here I've put one in. There's a screw and a roll plug, and that's going to allow me to set the level. But I'm going to work out where the track needs to go before I need to know where to put the roll plugs. And then I've got quite a crafty little scheme to fix the track. And it's the track that we're going to be hot glue gunning to the top of those screws. But because they're screws, I can use a piece of wood and a spirit level to kind of get an idea of how much I need to screw them in or screw them out for them to all match up. So once I've got those levels right, then the track goes in on top and hot glue gun that to the tops of the screws, using the spirit level to make sure that all is level. And then we should have a pretty robust level for the track. And I'll do a quick test run with a wagon or something just to make sure. But I think that this is where I can make a huge improvement over what I had here before. I've got the first of the track loosely laid in. And this was actually trickier than you might think because uh, 
I was right on the limit of maximum radius of the set track pieces. So what I had to do was actually go away and solder in a piece of flexi track between two of the set track curves. And this allows uh, a tighter radius without introducing a kink, which was otherwise what was ending up happening. And you can see there, we use the full width of the track bed as that goes round. And then we're into flexi track here. This kink will go away as everything is secured. And then this will run over the bridges. And I'm just experimenting with point work. I think we're going to end up with point work on the bridge. And this will give an option to motorise that point at some point in the future, if that turns out to be possible. But this area here is uh, certainly beyond the scope of this video to some extent. I've bought myself a mini hot glue gun. And I'm going to hot glue gun the track to the tops of the screws. And that is going to hold it in place until I can get round to ballasting the track. Now the ballasting is going to be with a cement and very fine granulated stone mix. Uh, but I need to do some of the wiring where uh, we wire between the different rail sections. So we've still got expansion and contraction on the fish plates but I can still get electrical continuity by soldering a loop of wire between those. And that wire will just get buried in the ballast. So I'm going to get on and start fitting the screws and the roll plugs now that I know where the track is going to go. With uh, a number of the screws now in place, and you can see them there, it's on to the hot glue stage. Now, this is all theoretical for me. And um, I think theoretically it should work. I use the spirit level to make sure that the track has uh, a flat gradient or as flat as possible, but also that there's no twists from side to side. And a small dab from the hot glue gun on the screw head and then squish down the sleeper should just permanently fix the track in place. And it'll be suspended up a little bit, but we're going to fix that with the ballasting, which that's the plan. So. Let's put it to the test and see if the plan works. Well, it's been out for a few days now and the hot glue is kind of working. It's not as robust as I would have liked, but that's a kind of okay because when the ballast goes in, it will literally set like concrete and really rigidly hold this track in place. So for now, all it is is just making sure that the track doesn't move about before we get to that stage. Now up at this end, I've put a point in. I know I said that I didn't really want to have points because they were an area where things could derail, but I relented and I've put one in. And I'm going to be getting a point lever to be able to manually throw this. At the moment, uh, the spring has kind of rusted out because this was buried underneath mud in the centre of the garden for several years. But this also means that ultimately I can wire in an ABC shuttle and that's because the trains are going to have to shuttle over the three quarters of the length of this oval that is going to be built before that conifer tree has to go. I can't build the track around it just yet because it just keeps pushing things apart. But moreover, I'm going to have some burly men in with chainsaws and I don't want the track to get trodden on so it's probably best to keep it away from that area. But with the Hornby Bluetooth decoders we can use that ABC functioning and really have something interesting that I can enjoy in the garden without needing the full circuit just yet. This track really does look great. It took a bit of work to get the levels just right and that hot glue gun method really actually pays dividends. I wouldn't do that on my home layout indoors, but out in the garden, it does the trick ready for the ballast to get all put in. Now, I hope you've really enjoyed coming along with this build with us and uh, as excited as I am about the progress that I've made. With the track starting to come together, the next step is gonna be doing some of the wiring.
I've got to bridge the expansion joints with some loops of wire. This is important in the garden because as we said before, we do get expansion and contraction on a much grander scale outdoors and you must leave an allowance for that or your track will buckle. But you also want the electrical continuity. You cannot rely on the fish plates because they will oxidize over time. But that's going to come in the next video. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments section down below. How's your garden railway build going? Are you enjoying this one? And are there any hints and tips that you might like to share for getting some really good effects out here in the garden? And maybe there's some kind of scenic items that you would love to see me add to this layout to really bring it alive in later episodes. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying don't forget you can check us out over on Patreon with a number of different tiers of rewards. And uh, also you can become a channel member too and help support the channel that way. And everybody who does, you are absolute heroes. We've also got the full merch store down in the description box underneath the video. And you can pick up your t-shirts, your hoodies, your mugs, and so much more. But until next time, please like, share and subscribe and stay frosty out in the garden. Keep those garden railway builds coming along. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support is provided by This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'd like to thank everybody over on Patreon and an extra special huge thanks goes out to our Patreon heroes. Without you guys over on Patreon, we really wouldn't be able to keep making the video content that you see on this channel. And don't forget that you can also head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk and check out the different tiers of rewards. Thank you so, so much. You are absolute legends.